All right, guys, so today we are doing a video that we actually had a comment from somebody asking us to do this test. And I was like, yeah, I can, why not? It sounds like something that we should do for you guys, because I'm sure there's a lot of people that have this question. And it was in regards to processing 360 footage on the new MacBook M1. So, or Mac Mini or MacBook Air or whatever it is. So we took... Uh, two 10 minute clips, they're around 10 minutes. First one was on this camera here, so the Insta360 ONE R, and another 10 minute-ish clip on the Insta360 ONE X. So I don't know if there's much difference in how they actually record. They may be very similar, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna do three tests, three, three tests, three tests. One is just going to be doing uh, a render out with the one R with a bunch of the features turned on we're gonna do the same thing with the one X and then we're gonna put both of them so it exports in like a queue of the two because again what we're concerned is with heating now I don't have the 16 inch MacBook Pro anymore I used to so that would have been a really nice test to test it on but we are going to be testing it on my iMac versus uh, the M1 and also realize that the M1 is emulating because the Insta360 Studio is still Intel based and it hasn't been updated to fully support the Apple Silicon chip. So it is going to be going through emulation. So it'll be surprising or impressive or it's curious, I guess, to, to know what kind of speed we're going to get out of the M1 machine, which is, which is right here. So what we're going to do now is I've got the memory card, just kind of put this on here. So always put your protector on because you don't want to scratch, scratch those lenses and footage here. What we're going to do to try to make this a fair fight as well is we're going to copy the footage from the SD card into a drive so that it's bottleneck is not going to be the card. The, the bottleneck will be the processor. So we're going to pop this in here. This is going in the, in the old iMac because we're going to do the iMac first. And I also have a little stopwatch up here. I have one on the Mac as well so that we can get some timing. And I'm just going to move some footage here. So this is going to be them. And we're going to copy this one to this one. And this is the R and the X footage. So grand total between these two files um, just under 15 gigs, as you can see here. And in regards to storage wise, I'd say they're almost identical. You know, one is 3.8 gigs, one is 3.5 gigs. So again, they're not perfectly 10 minutes. So that would be one being a few seconds more, a few seconds less. All right. You guys don't have to hit, sit here and wait. I'll, I'll be back. All right. So we've got the footage installed. It is actually on the computer right now we've removed as you can see right here we've removed the SD card so that we know it's not coming from there and we are going to actually open up Insta 360 there it is right there and we're going to take this footage here and just kind of move it in all right so here's the two pieces of footage right there and this one here, the first one, I believe, is the Insta360 ONE X, and the second one is the Insta360 ONE R. So, we're going to load up the 360 ONE X footage here, and what we're going to do, just pause that, but it plays, you can see, like I could, on the Intel machine, of course, plays back, it plays fine, right, no slowdown or anything like that, you guys can see me playing around up here. Works good, right? All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna lock direction. We're going to do dynamic stitching, chromatic calibration, yep. We're going to go into media process, and just for fun, we're gonna put, just so there's something, we're gonna put action focus, file properties is good, and what we're gonna do is hit this little share button, and this is up at full. We're keeping it the way it is, and browse, we're gonna make sure this goes into my output folder and we're gonna go 
and hit my little stopwatch guy up here. We're going to hit OK and go. And now this is going. So this is the Insta360 ONE X exporting. And this is a 10 minute and 3 seconds. So it should give us a, a rough idea. All right, we'll be right back. I just wanted to stop here. We're about six minutes, uh, just coming in at about 30% of the way done here on this 10 minute clip. And I wanted you guys to take a look at this because I think it's important. We're doing this on an iMac, but if you did have, like, let's say a 16 inch MacBook Pro, um, heat plays a big issue, right? When that, that processor really starts to kick up, we really start to see throttling happen. So even on the iMac right now, if we click on the CPU right here, um, you can actually see our CPU temperature, like 97 degrees. Right, we're, we're peaking up there, 97, 80, 89, but we're, we're hovering in around that 90 all the time and the fans are on, right? The fans are cooking 95, right, 91. So even the processor here, you can see that it's up, but it's only sitting at about mid-level, right? It's, it's not just cranking them all the way up. The processor is kind of sitting where they need to sit. Uh, your graphics memory and everything is full, but even the graphics processor is kind of running at about 50, 60% and we're pulling about 40 frames per second, 35 to 40, somewhere in that range. So definitely heat, and on the on the 16 inch MacBook Pro, this would definitely cause throttling. So we would definitely start to see that come down. So I'm interested to see what the processor and heat is gonna be like on the M1 when we're running this same footage through the Insta360 app. All right, I'm gonna just kinda of hang out some more. All right, guys, last like 4%. So we got our we got our mouse up here ready to stop. Figure out what this thing is going to do. But, yeah, we're looking at about a 2 to 1. So if you have a 10-minute clip, you're looking at about 20 minutes. My guess is if it's a 5-minute clip, you're looking at about 10 minutes. And this is on my iMac. So it's 64 gigs, i7, uh, 3.8 gigahertz, I think it is. I can't remember what it is. I'll have to take a look for you guys. I should know that. But 64 gigs of RAM, 8 gig video card. And so close, so close. Ready, and it's like watching paint dry. 22 minutes, 7 seconds. 22 minutes, 7 seconds. So we're going to get this machine ready for this. And we're going to be back in just a second. Test the M1. So what I think I'm going to do is we'll do the same footage on this one. So the Insta360 ONE X footage. And then what we'll do is we'll do another uh, run with the two of them running back to back. So we're going to run 20 minutes of footage. Again, you guys won't need to sit here for that. But I want to see with cooling. And again, with this, uh, this is going to be way better and efficient than the 16-inch MacBook Pro would be. So if this can come close to this, it should really, my guess would be, uh, because of the throttling issues, should dominate the 16 inch, but we don't know. We'll find out right away. Hold on. All right, guys, so we've got the footage installed here on the M1. Uh, this is the eight gigs MacBook Pro. You can see you have the same footage here. So we're gonna bring up Insta360. There it is. Alrighty, same deal. Drag these pieces of footage over here. There's the main clip pause that and all we're gonna do is we've got this all set up so same same features so we have that use flow state lock direction normal we got dynamic and cro chromatic calibration turned on media process we've got action focused and when we hit the export here we're gonna hold on for a second I gotta just bring up my stopwatch stopwatch there it is so we'll reset that and this is going into output two, very good, H.264 at the highest bit rate, very cool. We're gonna go, okay, start. And we'll check in when it gets to about the 50% mark, just to see how the processors are doing. Cause you can see even right here, right now, the processors are, they rack right out, right? CPU 85% versus the 50% that the Intel was getting pretty much consistently. So we were hitting 50% and that was about it. 
So we're gonna come back at the 50% mark on this machine just to see how that CPU is doing and see what our time is, is how it's going. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so we just passed 50% on the M1 MacBook Pro and it's definitely slower without question. The, the Intel machine, 3.8 gigahertz, 64 gigs of RAM and eight gig video card is definitely faster. Um, we're, we're about 17 minutes and we're only 50% of the way through. So this one finished the whole project in about 22 minutes where this one's only at 50% at 17 minutes. So that second half should take about the same amount of time. So we're gonna break a half an hour for sure, maybe even 35 minutes to do this. But I do want you guys to see this. Number one is that the CPU, right? We're pretty much still rocking it at full full speed. So even though the fans are on, right, our CPU is efficiency wise about 85 to 90%. Uh, temperature wise, I don't really know because the sensors here, there's no sensor information. So we don't know the heat right now inside of this, but it is utilizing that. So we're not seeing any kind of throttling happening, which is, which is good. The other thing that we need to kind of put into the equation is that this software is running through Rosetta. So because of that, you know, it is being emulated. So is that going to slow the process down? Probably. Will it get faster when it actually has a native application? So something that actually takes advantage of the Apple Silicon? My guess would be yes. And we are going to test this again, I think, when, when that software or this software gets updated. So we're going to continue. You guys don't need to watch. I'll be right back with the final time. All right. Stay tuned. All right, guys, we are we are close. We are very close, 97% and 33 minutes. So we are getting about 66% or two thirds, I would say the efficiency of the Intel machine. So we were at about 22 minutes for the iMac running the 3.8 gigahertz. And this one coming in about 33, I'm gonna say 34 minutes um, because we are right at the end here. So just, kind of just wait for this to finish up. And it definitely it definitely is slower. And again, we don't know if this will speed up. My guess is that it probably would if Insta360 actually converts their app into uh, something that is actually written for the Apple Silicon. And when that happens, we'll do another kind of speed test, another 10 minute clip just to see if it does speed up the process. And I just wanted to show you guys too this is almost done here, so just hold on one second. We are so close, so close. 90, done. So 34 minutes, nine seconds. So we are, we increased by about 12 minutes. So that's that's a, that's a fairly big win in regards to the iMac, but hopefully if any of you guys have actually, or have the Insta360 software on a 16 inch MacBook Pro, record a 10 minute clip if you can, because I'm curious to see if the heating plays an effect on it. I, I believe it would. But I want you guys to see this. I'm just going to come back in here. Because even though it takes a bit longer to render, it's not as if this is unusable by any means. So if we come in here and just kind of go into free capture, you'll see like this, it, it moves around. Like there's no problems playing around with this at all, right? You can, that spins around quite nicely. You can do all your all your information. You can track stuff. You can do all that. Will it take a little bit more time when it renders out? It, well, yeah, it, it definitely seems that way, um, but doable. So I'm going to do one last test where I am going to put both clips in there just to see, you know, if you were running about 20 minutes worth of footage, what kind of time difference? And I don't think this is going to heat to the point that we're going to see it drop any more than 50% and that's on the iMac. So my guess is that we're going to, both of these times are going to kind of double, but it was curious to see how the CPU on the M1, it just, it constantly was between like 80 and 90% all the time where the iMac was constantly at about 50%. So I'm going to run those and just put the, the specs up there for you guys. All right, two, two more secs. All right. So final test that we're starting. We've actually got both clips highlighted. We right clicked on them to do a batch export. So you'll see on this screen right here, we have it set original resolution, uh, bitrate quality is high, H.264 flow state stabilization is turned on. That's it. 
Same thing over here on the M1, so original, high, H.264, flow state. Um, this one is going to 360 output 1, this one's going to 2, because I have iCloud, so I don't need them synchronizing at the same time. And we are going to do the same thing, so we're going to hit stopwatch, start, and start. And then this one here, we are going to do the same and come up here, stopwatch, start, and start. And now, these are off. So, my guess is, we'll just clear the, the, the done ones, that uh, I'll be back in about, for me, my guess is about an hour. For you guys, uh, much faster. Hold on, we'll be right back. All right guys, so as you can see, this machine finished, and this machine's almost done, very quick. But there was a few things just to kind of be aware of, which was surprising. So both of these are rendering the exact same clips. So the first clip was taken from an Insta 361 X and the second clip was from an Insta 361 R. Uh, the R clip is slightly longer by about four seconds, not much, four seconds over 10 minutes. But on the Intel machine, the first clip, which was what we did the test on in the beginning, came out almost exactly the exact same time. So about that 22 minute mark, she was like, yep, we're done. But actually this one's almost finishing here. So we're just gonna stop this stopwatch here. Hold on, last percentage. All right, so this one took an hour and five minutes to do both clips. So again, on the Intel machine, the first clip when we did the test was about 22 minutes, I believe it was. So my expectation was the second clip, we would come in about 44 minutes, 45 minutes. But we actually finished it, and here you go, 36 minutes. So for whatever reason, the Insta361R footage, this machine can encode quicker. Why? I don't know. But it must be something in the original format of those two cameras that makes the R more efficient to process, would be my guess. Now over here on the uh, M1 MacBook, we were, again, looking at about... 34 minutes, I believe it was, 34 minutes for the original footage. And that would give us an expectation that we would come in around an hour and eight minutes. Now we came in around an hour and five minutes. So I would say that she dealt with both clips pretty close to the same. The R may be a little bit more efficient, but, but not really noticeable. So again, this machine, definitely faster. Without question, the Intel machine is just designed to do it a bit better. But you have to remember the software from Insta360 has been written for this. This is being emulated, right? So it's going through Rosetta 2, which means that it's definitely not going to run as fast. So we're going to redo this test again once uh, Insta360 releases a Apple Silicon version of their software to see if that's something that will speed up the process. Anyways, there you go, guys. It gives you a bit of information. Is it runnable on here 100 percent. it's very smooth using the computer itself to actually do all the work and keyframe and and just manipulate that 360 footage works like a charm just realize that if you are someone that is dealing with large insta 360 footage so 10 minutes 20 minutes half an hour um it's definitely looks like it should be faster here doable here just just not as quick all right guys i'm gonna leave it there if you have any comments or questions, or if you have a 16-inch MacBook and can do a test with this, leave your results down below because I'm interested to see what the timing is like. And uh, that's it. Links down below if you guys are interested in picking up one of the Insta360 cameras because I love them. That's probably one of my favorite cameras. And uh, that's all. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Do all the good stuff. Hit the little bell. And we'll see you guys next video. Later, guys.